Hey everyone, it's MaggieBot and we're doing the best of 2015. Uh, this includes a lot of the games from the end of the year that I got to play just from Essen, as well as a couple from the beginning of the year. It was a little hard to remember what years everything came out because it all kind of blends together eventually, um, but I did the best I could. I will be doing another video about all of the games that didn't appear on this list that I haven't tried yet, and I will try and post that in the description when it's done. So the couple of honorable mentions I want to get out of the way, uh, you have Mombasa from r, r Games, you have Shakespeare, Steamworks, you've got uh, Oh My Goods, really solid all around games, but maybe not my favorite. And then you have something like Food Chain Magnet, which after a couple of plays so far, I don't know that I actually enjoy yet. So. Just let, let me say that those are good games, nothing about them, but uh, that they are not in my top 10. A couple others scattered about, but let's get right to the list. Game number 10, and at number 10 I have a small trick-taking game. Um, this is Jiraku. It comes all the way from Modeus Designs. Um, I do believe they're in talks to get a printing in the States, but it is a fabulous little trick-taker. Um, players are incentivized to move from one side of the board to the other, um, kind of round by round, you get bonuses, and then each trick-taking round also lends a few points, so you also have to do well on those. Number nine is Blood Rage. Blood Rage is a two to four player area control game with a drafting element, and um, I don't have the box cover because I don't own it yet. Uh, Blood Rage is really neat. It's very easy to learn and easy to teach. It's got a lot going on in it. Um, I just don't see it coming off my shelves very often enough to own it, but it is very good. Um, I would highly recommend anyone try it if you can, uh, especially if you have game libraries or somewhere, a friend has it or something. It's it's pretty neat. Number eight is La Granja, and La Granja could have technically qualified for last year's top ten. Uh, it is also out widely available in North America from Stronghold Games this year, so that's when I've played the most of it. Uh, I played a good 10 or 11 games. It is a wonderful cover song of lots of different mechanics, and it's got a little bit of Gricola and a little Luna, a little bit of everything kind of tossed in the box, but it works. It's kind of like copycat from a couple of years ago, where yes, it's a big mishmash, but it's a very smartly done, well-oiled machine. Uh, Le Grand Ha is fabulous at most player counts, beautiful art, beautiful bits. Can't recommend it enough, really good. Number seven is Grand Oster Hotel. Uh, Grand Austria Hotel is a fabulous little three-player game. Uh, players are putting guests into rooms for the evening and feeding them fabulous meals of strudel, cake, coffee, um, wonderful things going on in this. I do say three players because it says two to four on the box and the four-player experience is so much excruciating downtime that you can't stand it anymore. And at the two-player experience, we've actually had to implement a couple house rules to loosen up the resource pool a little bit, add an extra die-in, add a little draft, add a little bit of um, the taking away older guests and it really fixed it up where the two player was more dynamic and fun to play. Great little game. Number six is an essence sized treat from this year and that is Ponzi Scheme. Ponzi Scheme is a three to five player deduction game. Um, it's got lots of cool bits in it and a really unique theme. So you actually run a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> you take loans and knowing your interest is kind of up at the end of the week and you take the loans, you take the loans trying to build up your industries as you go. And in the game, the first person to not be able to pay their debts uh, actually stops the game, they lose, and the person with the best built industry wins. Um, ruthless and fun and weird and cool, and I really hope that they successfully make their way into North America with this one. I heard that they have some negotiations going on, and I'm looking forward to that a lot. Number five is The Prodigal's Club, and this is probably my least played game on my entire list. I just happen to know myself well enough to know that this is going to be a front runner within this top ten. If I'd played it more, it might have actually placed a little higher. Prodigal's Club is the standalone expansion follow-up to Last Will. Um, this is from Vladimir Suki. I don't know how to say his name, but he's fabulous and checking the editions, which pretty much everything they do is amazing. Uh, Prodigal's Club, you 
are trying to get rid of all that pesky money and reputation and all these votes that you have and come out of it less bored and more destitute. Um, in the game, you have to kind of watch every aspect of the board at one time, and there's even rules to include the original Last Will game into the game as one of the boards. I'm really looking forward to that. I know this game is going to be right up my alley, and so I can already recommend it, even though I've only played it twice. Number four on my list is Niet from Yellow Games. Niet is a reprint, so yes, it could have qualified on other best of lists as well, but Niet is a very cool, clever way of doing trick taking. In the game, you spend the first half of a round kind of bidding with your fellows about what trumps you want, what colors are good, what player goes first, and how many points each trick is worth. Once all of that is agreed upon, then you get, for one round, different teams. So the first player chooses me and him on a team, and the other two are on a team. And so for that round, all of your tricks score for both of you and your teammates. If there's uneven amounts, there's even a doubler for one of the smaller teams, and it's a really interesting, cool way of playing uh, trick-taking, and it fits up to five players, and so that's kind of neat and different. Number three is The Delivery Project. And I don't know if you can tell, but my copy is still in shrink, but I have played this a good six or seven times. It is fabulous and wonderful, despite having some printer errors, some wool errors, some error error. Oh, spiel works. They didn't even get the scoreboard right. <laughs> but Delivery Project is such a fabulous little worker placement game. It doesn't even matter. It's got a little bit of a bidding system similar to Targi and then a kind of normal worker placement round, except you can either use one or multiple of your workers on any given space. So there's asymmetrical amounts of actions, really fine, good stuff. And the art is my favorite art from the entire year of any game. So it's this puffy cloud Miyazaki, Miyazaki looking thing. And it's the same artist that does a lot of Freedom and Freezes work and it just looks like that and it's wonderful. All right, number two should be no surprise that it's on my list and that if it'll fit in the frame, is the gallerist. The gallerist is a two to four player, big mama jamma from Vital Lacerda. Uh, in the game, you have just four spaces with which to put a worker and one worker each. And I happen to love those types of games. It is very difficult to make very simple decisions. And that is what is so good. It also weighs a million pounds, five million pounds. Um, gallerist should be looked at for most players who like something heavier and even medium weight players who want just a little bit more challenge to it, Gallerist provides. I'm a little worried about one strategy being a bit stronger than others and that is the big brown meeple strategy, but that is for another video. The Gallerist. Buy it. All right, so what's my number one? This should come as no surprise to anyone that follows me too much on Twitter. That is Nippon from What's Your Game. Nippon is a fabulous action selection game. Uh, you see the board with a bunch of meeples, and each turn you take a meeple away, and you take the action next to the meeple. Uh, the color meeples actually tell you what resources are taken away from your next round. So the fewer colors you get, the less you have to pay out. But sometimes it's worth it to take that one perfect action or even take a color meeple away from an opponent so they have to kind of replan their turn. It is wonderfully done. The cover art is beautiful. Even if the board art is not as nice, it is a great game. And it works for, I would say, pretty well from two to four. The closer to two player you get, the more ruthless it can be. But but still very, very fun and highly recommend. Thanks for watching my top 10 of 2015. Um, if there are any games that you don't think I mentioned that I maybe should have, please put them in the comments below and I'll see y'all next time.